But first, we're going to talk about one point perspective. And uh, so rotate your sketchbook like so. Let's divide this page in half. <coughs> um, and with most of what we've done so far, we've, we've focused on two-point perspective. And in two-point perspective, you've got uh, one direction, just the Z direction, uh, up and down, which does not uh, foreshorten doesn't get smaller, there's no um, vanishing. In one point perspective, I'm just gonna draw a straight up square. It's about a, I don't know, an inch and a quarter, inch and a half square. In one point perspective, my square, my side should be equal. There's no foreshortening happening going left and right or up and down. So this is almost like an orthographic view. The only foreshortening that will take place is uh, when I add my one point that my lines will vanish to, and it will be the depth. So my height stays the same and my width stays the same, at least on this first plane. So I'm just going to I'm gonna pick a point. You can pick a point really anywhere. I'm going to pick a point right here. And then I'm going to take the four corners of my square and connect them to that point. That's the point with which all these lines will vanish. And then, if you recall from like our three cube rules, the further to the left or right um, the cube goes, then we, we start to see more of one face and less of the other face. So we see a whole bunch of this face, and so the depth with which this cube will go should be fairly short. And I'm, I'm actually guessing, and I. One, one thing I'm going to tell you today is that we don't use one-point perspective, and there's a few reasons for it. Uh, and so I don't know one-point perspective as well as I know other um, grids, and I don't know how to figure out how deep that is. I just know that it's not that deep. It shouldn't go back too far. And so I'm basically going to just draw an open... Uh, box here. I'll see the inside surfaces and I'll see that top surface. But it's really if I wanted to see inside of an object might be when I would use one point perspective. So I'm just going to hatch that surface and I'll hatch this one. And it's kind of like it's hollow. But we just don't use it that often. Um, one place where you might use it would be drawing environments. So on the, the other portion of this, the top of this page, I want you to draw in a um, just a line running through the middle. This is going to be our horizon line. We're going to draw just a, a very simplified, overly simplified street scene. You know, one, one time, one of the things that you guys think about Maybe when you think of one point perspective is is uh, you know standing on the railroad tracks and looking at the horizon and that that horizon in between those trail rip train tracks you've got that one point so uh, I'm going to add a point right in the center of this line that is my vanishing point and so but I'm going to draw just again as if I'm standing in the middle of a street and I'm looking down that street we're just going to draw some some rectilinear kind of buildings uh, to either side of the street. And, you know, one point perspective again, one of the things that I'm going to assume is basically this is at eye level. And so there's my person and their shoulders. So we're going to draw maybe a couple of buildings that might be two stories tall. So the bottom of the building is going to be below, the bottom of these buildings will be below the horizon line. So I'm going to draw a line that represents where the bottom of these buildings will be. And then the top of the building, if it's, if it's a two-story building, if I wanted to draw the top of the doors maybe, I would put that about like that. It's going to be above my head. But I want to draw the ceiling or the roof of the buildings. And so it's going to be at a, probably a steeper angle than this one down here. 
In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more of a steepness to this. And then, as we said over here, my x direction and my z direction, those don't foreshorten. The only thing that's really foreshortening is this going towards that point. So I'm going to draw a line that represents the side of a building, pretty close to my person there. And then a line that represents the other edge of that building. This is where that building would meet the ground, and here is my surface. And this is where one point perspective kind of does cheat a little bit. Instead of the, the lines, my X lines vanishing, they're just going to be st straight left to right. Again, the only thing that's vanishing in one, one point perspective is, is that depth. And then I'm going to add another building just next to it. Bring that over. Obviously, just as we've learned with two point perspective, as things get further away, these surfaces should get a little bit smaller. And you can even use the diagonal method that we learned in two-point perspective uh, if you wanted to create evenly spaced buildings. Let's just add another one further down towards the horizon. So the lie here is that um, I'm not getting any vanishing or foreshortening going up and down, and I'm not getting any uh, foreshortening um, if I'm talking about on just one plane uh, going left or right. The foreshortening is taking place as it moves towards that horizon. So I'm going to try and duplicate this angle Here's my ver vertical horizon, I guess. I'm going to try and duplicate that angle to the other side. I'm just going to try and draw a mirror. Well, that's not even close. A mirror of what's on the left over on the right. And so I'm actually just going to carry those points over. Here's the beginning of that first building over there, I think. Here's the top of that building. Carry that over. Carry this over. So this is the face of that building. It should be about the same size. I'm going to carry this point over. I'll carry that point over. I'm going to carry this point just straight over. Again, the sides of these buildings, the front facade of the building is foreshortening, but the sides of the buildings are just going to be flat and really orthographic in nature. I'm going to carry this point way over here. And we're not going to spend too much time on this. I will show you towards the end of class a way that we can you know, use this in exploratory sketches, a way that we can take advantage of uh, one-point perspective and product design. But for the most part, because of how this lies to us a little bit, and um, the nature of product design, we just don't we just don't use two uh, excuse me one-point perspective that often. It's not as descriptive.